Jesus Radio. Believe it. Greetings. My name is Yvette Maynard, author of Gluten Free Cooking at Your Fingertips. I'm here to share a simple recipe with you that's out of this book called Cassava Poem. Before I begin the recipe, just let me share a few details about cassava and about cassava corn itself. Cassava is a root crop, it's rich in fiber, and it's a very versatile crop as well. In some countries it's used for feeding animals. The leaves are dried at some times and made into hay to feed animals as well. It goes by quite a few names, manioc, yucca, tapioca, but in the Caribbean we call it cassava, simply cassava. Now this is, this is what a piece of cassava looks like. Uh, this has been peeled and this has not been peeled, but this is basically what I do. And I tend to prefer to grate my own cassava rather than purchase grated cassava. I, I tend to grate my own cassava. I should say something at the onset. Cassava spoils very, very quickly. In a day or two, cassava will go badly if you do not know what to do with it after you have purchased it. As long as I purchase cassava, I decide immediately what I'm going to do if I'm going to use it for cooking. I just parboil it, cool it, and freeze it if I'm not going to cook it either uh, right away. But if I'm going to make cassava pone or cassava bits, for that matter, where I need to grate it, I simply grate it freeze it and when I'm ready for it, I just defrost it and it comes back just as well as if it was just grated. Now I am going to let you know what ingredients we're going to use today and I chose this recipe for a few reasons. The ingredients are readily available, they're very reasonable, they are healthy and obviously they are gluten free. We have brown sugar, and my preference is for brown sugar because of the authenticity of the sugar. We have cinnamon, I'm sure almost everyone or everyone uses cinnamon at some point in time. We have some raisins here and the raisins are optional merely because everybody does not like raisins. I've made cassava pon for one of my customers who does not eat raisins but she loves the cassava pon so I simply omit the raisins from her cassava pon. Obviously we have the grated cassava here. I grated this cassava myself. Um, you simply peel the cassava, you rub it along the grater and that's it. That's the end result. We have water, everybody has water. But the water is very important in the cassava pond. Here we have three ounces of melted butter. And my preference is for butter because I do not use margarine. If you read the ingredients in margarine, you would know that you should stay away from margarine. And I use organic butter. And the milk would come from grass fed cows. That's my preference. I use organic butter. Here we have some fresh grated coconut. I would not advise you to use the dry coconut because the moisture level is not the same. You do not get the same taste the same authentic taste when you use dry coconut. You simply grate your coconut as you would your cassava and if you do not have the time you can purchase frozen co coconut from the supermarket. I have one pan here. It's a, an 8 by 4 pan. It's a non-stick pan. My preference really is for stainless steel however I could not find a stainless steel pan that I wanted so my next best bet would be a non-stick pan I am gonna let you know as I go along that these ingredients are there's no hard and fast way to mix these ingredients together I normally melt the butter because I want an even distribution in the mixture if you try to use the butter that comes out of the refrigerator it will mean that at some point in time you may not get everything mixed into all the butter mixed into the cassava and the coconut and stuff and the taste will not be the same when I am 
ready I normally melt this butter for a few minutes in the toaster oven uh, if you are ahead of yourself you can simply take the butter out of the refrigerator and it will come down now I want to show you exactly how I mix my cassava corn you use a bowl that is able to accommodate the entire mixture this is three cups of grated fresh cassava I place the cassava in the bowl and once you leave this cassava for a while you will realize that starch begins to accumulate at the bottom of any container that you put it in I should tell you that I make a thickening agent from the same cassava um, because of the starchiness of it once you grate some cassava you squeeze out the milk and you leave it in a container for at least two hours the starch settles on the bottom there's a liquid on the top you simply throw off the liquid off the top of the milk and you are left with the starch at the bottom if you leave it there for another two hours it will become as as a powder substance and I use it as a thickening agent because it does not change the taste of what you're gonna thicken I am not gonna add some coconut this is four ounces four ounces of grated coconut I'm adding that to the mixture since I'm gonna use raisins I'm gonna add my raisins to the other ingredients that have already gone in I'm going to start mixing this up so that everything is mixed well in inside the cassava and once you have a bowl where you can mix the ingredients properly you do not have to worry about any different taste when this product is ready I will then add some sugar to the product the only reason I would add the cinnamon last is so that I can get it distributed evenly into this mixture I'm now adding four ounces of brown sugar to the mixture now this recipe does not call for baking soda or baking powder therefore there's no need for you to be concerned about adding those things the cassava corn recipe is not a, a recipe that needs to rise in any way once you put it into the pan it will bake at that same level uh, you don't have to bother about it coming over the pan I'm not mixing the sugar into the remainder of the ingredients that I've added before and you will know once you start to practice with this you will know when everything is mixed in one thing I should say about cassava is that there are quite a few different varieties some cassava is dry and some cassava has more moisture uh, if you are experienced in dealing with cassava especially in making cassava corn you may realize that you need a bit more water or a, a little less water depending on your breed of cassava if the cassava is too dry you need to add a bit more moisture than the recipe will call for but if your cassava has the right amount of moisture then you don't need to worry about adding any more water to that recipe now you can see here that all of the ingredients are mixed in most of the ingredients I'm sorry are mixed in here I'm now going to add three ounces of melted butter and I'm going to mix this in it's easy to mix in because like I said the butter is already melted you're going to get some additional moisture from the coconut as long as you use the fresh grated coconut or even if you use the frozen coconut you will still get the same moisture just be mindful of the fact that you will not get that moisture from 
dry, dry the dried coconut. Okay, the butter has now been incorporated into the mixture. I'm now adding about 12 ounces of water. I will mix in the water as I go. Based on my experience, I will know if this cassava needs more water or if the water is just enough. Now I'm mixing here and I can see from my experience that I'm going to need all 12 ounces of the water because of the texture of the, the cassava. Uh, you don't need the cassava so stiff that you don't get that gooey consistency from the cassava. So I have used all 12 ounces of the water that I had written here for me. And this is just enough for the cassava. Remember, you have to have enough water for this cassava to cook in the oven. Otherwise, you're not going to have a, a, a very nice pond. You're going to have a pond that's technically dry. You don't need that. You need some moisture. And even though the water will not dry out, it will cook the cassava properly once you use the required amount of water. From the consistency, you can see that there's water inside there. The last thing I will add is some cinnamon and I, I can average the cinnamon for here it would probably take half teaspoon of cinnamon but I can average how much cinnamon I'm putting into the mixture and know that it will be just right. So to recap I have used three cups of freshly grated cassava. I've used three ounces of freshly grated coconut. I've used four ounces of brown sugar. I was optional with the raisins and I've decided to use the raisins but I didn't measure them because you don't really need to measure raisins. It depends on how much you feel you would like in your mixture of cassava pond. For this cassava mixture I used 12 ounces of water and I used three ounces of the melted butter. And there you have it, a quick and easy cassava recipe. I am going to add this mixture into This is a prepared pan. I should tell you a little bit before I actually put this mixture in here. I always use parchment paper when I am baking. This alleviates burning, it alleviates sticking. So that when this product is finished, you just turn it upside down or you can take it out in your hand and just peel the paper off. The paper will not stick to your product. You will have a perfect product and you will not have to bother about trying to jam a, a knife or a fork or anything trying to get this product out of this pan. I'm now going to add my mixture to the pan. And remember I said earlier, cassava pond does not require a rising agent, which would be baking powder or baking soda. So you can put it, fill it almost to the top and know that it will not rise past the top. And you see this was just enough to fill this pan. Three cups of cassava. 4 ounces of coconut, 4 ounces of brown sugar, a dash of cinnamon, some raisins, um, we should let some raisins just settle to the top so that you see there are raisins in there. And there you have it, less than half an hour and your mixture is complete. Now once you are comfortable with the amount of cassava that you have in the pan, the next thing you will do is cut the parchment paper, the excess, 
excess parchment paper from your pan. You do not want any paper around for burning or anything to take this. So what I do is I cut off the excess paper from the pan before I actually put it into the oven. I have set my oven to 350 degrees and we're going to bake this cassava cone for approximately one hour or until it is golden brown. As long as you leave it in the oven for 350 degrees for one hour, you can rest assured that it is cooked. It may need a little browning in which case you leave it in a bit longer, but you're going to have one perfect product on your hand as long as you follow the instructions that you were given in the recipe book and on this show as well. So here we have it. Um, any ex excess paper was trimmed from the parchment paper that was prepared for this pan and this is what your product would look like. This is cassava pond. Yes, there's a little bit of moisture in there and that moisture will cook the cassava. That, there you have it, that's cassava pond. With those simple ingredients that I gave you, my oven has been preheated to 350 degrees and I'm now going to place my cassava pond in the oven for approximately one hour. There you have it. I did not use my mittens because obviously the pan is not hot. But an hour after 350 degrees, you can rest assured I will need my mittens. There you have it. A quick and easy recipe for cassava pone from gluten-free cooking at your fingertips. When the cassava pone is ready, I will be back to show you how I take it from the pan. But you must allow the cassava pot, the, the product to cool entirely before you try to remove it from the pan. Even before you try to cut it, you should allow it to cool properly, approximately an hour. An hour is a good time to allow it to cool. That way you get, you get to take it out of the pan without it falling apart. That's one. And two, you get to be able to slice it and have a, a nice decent slice of cassava pone without it falling apart as well. This is what it looks like. This is a root crop. It's called cassava. This is the peeled portion. This is the unpeeled portion. And I am going to await an hour of the cooking of my cassava pone. In the meantime, I'm going to have a glass of carrot juice to relax me until my cassava pone is ready. Stay tuned and we'll be back after our cassava pone is re ready to show you the finished product. Cheers. Gluten free cooking at your fingertips. I am now back after one hour. At 350 degrees, we're now going to check the cassava pone to find out if it's in a ready state, if we're going to be able to turn off the oven, or if in fact we need to, to just leave it in for a bit longer. You will know once it's cooked, you'll be able to see once it's cooked. The only thing you will need to determine is how brown you want it. I'm now heading into the oven, and would you believe it, what a wonderful what a wonderful pan of cassava pawn this is. Don't ever forget that you cannot hold this without your mittens. This is 350 degrees, one hour. And there you have it. It's the same pan, the same cassava pawn. As mentioned earlier, you do not attempt to cut it. You do not attempt to take it from the pan until it is completely cooled. So after one hour, I will come back and show you how to get it out of the pan, how to take the paper from it, and how to slice your first slice of gluten-free cassava pone.
it has been wonderful presenting with you. I'll be back after an hour after this cassava bone is cooled and I'll take you through the final steps of what should be an interesting journey for you beginning your gluten-free lifestyle. Thank you and stay tuned. Okay, so I'm now back after one hour of letting the cassava bone cool. I'll show you exactly how you take it from the pan so you do not have any breakage while you are allowing it to come out as one whole pan of cassava bone. First thing you do is wash your hands because you're going to be handling this with your hands. You need to get the paper off, the parchment paper off. And like I explained earlier, one of the reasons for using the parchment paper is that it comes right out of the pan. No problem at all. So we're gonna just shift it around in the pan a little bit. I can feel the play here, I can feel the movement. So you know it's ready, this is how you do it. It's still warm, but it's good enough for me to hold. Now you're taking it out of the pan. That's the parchment paper. There you have it. One perfect slice of uh, loaf of cassava pone. This is the parchment paper, what you use. Almost nothing to clean here. I am going to slice this cassava pone and you will see that it is not going to fall apart because now it's cool enough for me to cut it. One lovely slice of cassava pone. There you have it. From start to finish, gluten-free cassava pone. You can find it in the recipe book. Gluten-free cooking at your fingertips. This has been the addition of gluten-free cooking at your fingertips. Cassava pone was our recipe for today. Thank you and stay tuned for the other shows to come. Radio Billy